What are the New York Giants getting in Shane Bowen, their new defensive coordinator? Tyler Rowland of Locked On Titans joins us with the scouting report. That's coming your way next on the Locked On Giants podcast. You are Locked On Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode of the Locked on Giants podcast is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked on Giants podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast family your team every day. My name is Patricia Traina, P. Train, credentialed member of the New York Giants media for Locked On for Giants Country over at Fan Nation. And uh, I want to send a shout out to my everydayers, my Blue Crew community members, my newcomers and everybody in between. You guys are all appreciated and loved. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day or if you watch on YouTube, your first watch of the day. We are coming to you with special guest, Tyler Rowland. He is our Locked On Titans host. And Tyler, I don't know, man, we got something to talk about. I'm not sure what exactly we got to talk about uh, besides the fact that you and I haven't talked them quite some time. But uh, no, seriously, yeah. we're talking, Tyler's here to tell us about new Giants defensive coordinator, Shane Bowen. And uh, he's going to tell us exactly what the Giants are getting. So Tyler, first off, welcome on in. Thank you for jumping on the podcast so quickly after the news broke. Yeah, absolutely no problem. Anytime that I could come on and talk with you, you're obviously a legend, someone who uh, anyone in the industry should be looking up to for your excellent work covering the team for so long. It's it's an honor to be on. But at the end of the day, I have been with Shane Bowen for quite some time before he was promoted to D.C., when he was the shadow D.C. under Mike Vrabel in 2020, and then when he officially got the title. And my thoughts on our Shane Bowen is a good defensive coordinator. I don't know if he's a great defensive coordinator, like maybe Wink Martindale in, in his in his prime or some of these guys who are getting hired around the, the NFL who are, you know, like a D'Amico Ryans, for example, is considered a great defensive coordinator and things like that. But he's a very good defensive coordinator. And I think the big thing for Giants fans is you're going to see a defense that wants to do different things. It's no secret that Wink Martindale had his pressure packages. He wanted to get a lot of blitz pressures up there. He wanted to play a lot of cover one in the back end. And it'll be interesting for Giants fans to to track because Shane Bowen wants to do different things on defense and that'll require different skill sets from the players. So I think those, there's going to be a big philosophical change on the defense. But overall, I think some Titans fans even were too harsh on Shane Bowen. There was an idea that maybe the Titans could keep him around and retain him going around for a little while last week. And I was not I was not opposed to that happening. You have higher aspirations. You want new blood in there, if, if, being with the Mike Vrabel system for so long. But I think Shane Bowen is a good coach. That's my lasting thought. And you look at, number one red zone defense last year. You look at the Titans' run defense being consistently excellent over the last few years, even with rotating personnel and calling up practice squads. I mean, uh, the, the Titans had a guy off the practice squad named Quentin Bohanna starting, and I, I am as deep into the Titans' weeds as you could possibly be. And I'm like, who are these people out here? How are the Titans stopping the run right now? So I think Shane Bowen has dealt with a lot of bad personnel over the last few years with all the Titans injuries, because Mike Vrabel likes to run these guys into the ground in the summertime, and it shows up with the injuries. But I, I think overall, Shane Bowen is a good coach. And I think that's most important for the Giants right now, is you didn't get some bum, as Titans fans, some Titans fans would say. I think Shane Bowen is definitely an uh, a, a qualified defensive coordinator and should have one of the 32 jobs in the NFL. Tyler, I have to ask, I know Mike Vrabel was a defensive-minded coach. How much mm -hmm. of what the Titans ran was Vrabel's system versus what Bowen brought to the table? 
Well, I think it's interesting because the Titans over the last, you know, five years, the Derrick Henry era, we'll call it. Giants fans will probably understand that. They've done so many different things. You go back to like 2021, they were much more of a man coverage team. They like to play their man. I mean, obviously, most teams in the NFL are playing zone more often than not. But when it was money down time, the Titans would be man. And we've seen recently in the past couple of years, the Titans have gone to much more cover four and, and much more cover two in some of those situations. So I think one good thing about Shane Bowen is he has the ability to bend his defense to what's needed. Now, I don't think he's ever going to be like the Wink Martindale star. We're playing man all over. We're putting six guys on the line of scrimmage. We're blitzing all the time. I just don't think that's what's in Shane Bowen's DNA. I think he's much more of a cover four, cover two style guy. But I think one thing that I like about Shane Bowen is that he will have the ability to mold to what his defense does best, what is going to be best to beat the offense. He's a multiple and varied guy. And I think in, in today's NFL, you know, there are certain philosophies in football of, hey, like the old Legion of Boom Seahawks. We're playing cover three. We're lining up. You know what we're doing. Beat us. But there are other versions, I think, more in today's NFL where it's, hey, we're going to match whatever you're trying to do to beat you and be more varied and, and be more malleable in what coverages we run and run. And seeing the Titans go from a team that a lot of cover one, didn't play a lot of cover two to this year. They played more cover th uh, cover two, mixed in a lot more cover four, uh, match cover four, where, you know, kind of after the wide receivers declare their routes, the safety and the cornerback will say, okay, now we're playing man coverage on these guys because they came into our zone. So I think um, Shane Bowen is going to, it's hard to say because Vrabel only had one year as defensive coordinator, but I think Mike Vrabel, through what we've learned anecdotally and through stories about Mike Vrabel's time there, he is wants to be a more varied guy, wants to be more multiple in the coverages that he runs. So I think Shane Bowen got promoted to defensive coordinator for the Titans because he agrees with those things. So I think while it may not be Mike Vrabel's philosophy on what to do and when to do, because I think Vrabel definitely was a run this now, run this next third down, I think Shane Bowen having some freedom may be a better thing. I don't really have a lot of faith in Vrabel as a defensive coordinator, and I think the examples that we have prove that out. So I would be more optimistic about Shane Bowen as a defensive coordinator away and under from under the thumb of Mike Vrabel because it'll give him the ability to do more what he wants to do, and I think he's got a better idea of what to do than Vrabel does. What is his personnel bread and butter? Like, for example, Wink Martindale liked to play two down linemen. Um, mm -hmm four linebackers, you know, six defensive backs, you know, he played a lot right. of two down linemen. What is Vrabel, uh, I'm sorry, what does Bowen like to do? Okay, so one of the big things for Shane Bowen is he loves his nickel coverage. He wants five defensive backs out on the field, but one thing that he really likes is three safeties. He loves having a third safety to play as that pseudo linebacker on passing downs, to match up with the tight end, to match up with the running back out of the backfield. So safeties are going to be a big thing for Shane Bowen. He likes to use them different ways, and especially the Titans played nickel all the time. They did not play a ton of a base defense. The Titans' run defense was so good, but what's most impressive about that is they were so good at run defense while being in nickel. And if you can stop the run while being in nickel and keep yourself prepared for the RPO game and the passing game, especially going against Philly all the time, um, who knows what they're going to do with Cliff Kingsbury and his RPO heavy stuff. Uh, I think having the ability to stop the run while being in nickel with five defensive backs on the field gives you the ability to be ready for that pass attack and that RPO attack. And that's something that Shane Bowen's big on. Another thing that I would say that maybe isn't personnel, it's more schematic, big on games and stunts up front, big on twists with the defensive ends. He runs, I always called it the Landry loop because Harold Landry was the Titans primary edge rusher. They would have a got three guys on one side of the center one in the gap between the center and the guard, one in the gap between the guard and the tackle, and then the edge rusher. And they would have the two inside guys slant to the outside and then bring that edge rusher looping back behind them for a one-on-one -on -one with an, a center where your athletic edge rushers, like a Kayvon Thibodeau, should absolutely dominate in an athletic battle in a phone booth with the center. So uh, having defensive backs on the field, using a lot of defensive backs that can be physical as well to fit in the run game, while also using those stunts and twists up front, I think that's exactly what you're getting with Shane Bowen to, to combine with what we talked about originally, a varied coverage front where he's going to run a lot of different coverages. Hey, Giant fans. 
LinkedIn Jobs knows that your small business's success all depends on the team you surround yourself with. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It's so easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So don't spend time sorting through endless resumes and dead-end leads. Put LinkedIn Job to work for you today for free by visiting linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, Giant fans, happy Super Bowl to all who are planning to celebrate it from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. And speaking of which, FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W, or two, or three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for who scores a touchdown, total points scored, and so much more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. So head on over to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Is Bowen the type of DC where he prefers to have versatility with all his guys, or does he basically say, okay, um, you know, Jason Pinnock, for example, you're going to strictly mm-hmm. be a, the, the box safety. Kayvon, you're going to strictly be the will. You, you, the, or is, right. you know, is Bowen mix and match? I think, I think that it depends on the down, to be honest with you, because I think there are certain play- – your key core players to the defense that need to be out there all the time, he likes versatility. Jeffrey Simmons would maybe line up head over the center. He would line up as a, a like a defensive end a- out the outside. He would also line up as that traditional three technique, which is where he was most of the time. Harold Landry, as I mentioned, an edge rusher, would rush – but he would also drop back into coverage quite a bit. He likes those simulated pressures where you show pressure one side, you bring pressure from the other. It's still four guys coming, but you never know which four guys it's going to be. So I think that versatility is key for him, but there will be role players within it, the box safety who plays linebacker when they're in dime coverage, who matches up with tight ends, the the outside corner that doesn't go into the slot. I think that there are certain guys who will have specific roles and you'll be able to identify those role players and how they're used. But as a general rule, I think his studs on defense, he wants versatility from those guys to, to vary his looks, to vary his coverages and vary his responsibilities. Now the ESPN report from Jeremy Fowler, which broke the story about Shane Bowen coming to the Giants said something to mm-hmm. the effect of the Giants, I guess we're, we're still, they were talking to people that uh, I guess were Titan staffers. And I was trying to figure out, well, what could they be, you know, because as far as I know, the Giants, they just have one defensive staff position open, that being the outside linebackers coach. But who mm-hmm. are maybe some of the, the Titan staffers that worked under Bowen that you think might follow him to New York? Uh, well, I think uh, Ryan Crow, the outside linebackers coach for the Titans, did a pretty good job uh, teaching the edge rushers, those outside linebackers that put their hand in the dirt. I think he did a good job getting the most out of some of the pass rushers the Titans had. Uh, Rashad Weaver was a day-two pick out of Pittsburgh. He had five and a half sacks in 2022. Um, You look at uh, some of the young guys the Titans had this year. Caleb Murphy was an undrafted free agent who had some some good moments. Uh, uh, Travis Gibson is a guy who the Titans brought over from the Bears who had some good moments for the Titans. So I, I think that uh, that would be a good fit. Ryan Crow is the outside linebacker coach, especially because that position, Shane Bowen was an outside linebacker coach. He was a linebacker guy. So he wants somebody who can really deliver that message. He is a linebacker-centric and def- and safety-centric guy, uh, really having that good pressure on the outside and up the middle. So I think that could make sense. Uh, outside of that, with Terrell Williams, the defensive line coach, going to the Lions, he would be a name I would have mentioned. Um, outside of that, I think Scott Booker, who worked with safeties for the Titans. Again, safeties, outside linebackers, the two positions that I think Bowen has prioritized. He's someone who's on the market right now who, the, who Shane Bowen could be interested in bringing over. Okay, interesting. Now, what kind of teacher is Shane Bowen? 
I think that's where he really excels. I think, and the thing is, when you when you experience the the media mafia of Mike Vrabel, I would call it so, you know, I'm not telling you anything. We're never giving you any real details. We're never really giving you the inside information. It's kind of all Bill Belichick, coach speak. Let's get this over with and move on. Bowen, out of all the coaches for the Titans, I felt special teams coordinator, offensive coordinator, head coach, Bowen gave the most enlightful answers. He would be willing to point out where guys are doing certain things within the scheme and what guys' technique needs to improve. I think he gave very transparent answers more often. I mean, it's still the Mike Vrabel media mafia, so it's not like the answers were as transparent as other teams. But I think out of the the top four coaches for the Titans, the coordinators and the head coach, Bowen gave the most transparent answers and would be willing to kind of share more than other guys. And I personally think, I don't mean to make you know, a false equivalency here. But I think that you see what kind of communicator people are when they're in those situations. And I'm not saying Mike Vrabel is a bad communicator because he doesn't want to tell the beat reporters who's starting a quarterback this week. But but I think you can just tell in the way that people communicate, the way they answer, how they give their – because you know they're playing the game where you don't want to crush guys in the media. You also don't want to give away too much. But having the ability and having the communication talent – to express yourself and give good answers to the media that your fans deserve while also not giving away the farm and giving away too much, quote unquote. I think that's a talent. And I think those sorts of talents and that communication ability has the ability to manifest itself in teaching the players and communicating responsibilities to players. And what I would say is, uh, I mentioned it earlier, but in that 2020 season, Mike Vrabel did not name a defensive coordinator. He just after Dean Pease left and went to Atlanta because he hated Mike Vrabel and Mike Vrabel hijacked the play calling in the AFC Championship game in 2019, Dean Pease retired for a month and said, oh, I'll come back if I'm working for somebody else. And then Mike Vrabel just didn't hire a DC, just didn't name a DC, didn't promote one, blah, blah, blah. And the Titans defense really, really struggled in 2020 without looking at the stats and having them memorized. I think it was the worst defensive year for the Titans under Mike Vrabel. Well, in 2021, Shane Bowen is promoted to defensive coordinator, is given the ability to install the defense and run it from top to bottom. And the Titans had their best year on defense. So I think the ability for Shane Bowen to deliver his message, clearly just anecdotally from looking at 2020 to 2021, I think it's pretty clear that Shane Bowen is a good communicator, a good teacher, and can get that why across. It's not about what you need to do. It's about why we're doing it in today's NFL. And I think Shane Bowen has the ability to be a very good teacher to the defense. You you mentioned before that he's going to probably not run the same type of system as what Wink Martindale did. I'm, I'm just mm-hmm. curious, what are some of the similarities that you think he might run that Wink ran versus the major differences. You, may, I think one of the major differences you said was maybe not blitz as much, but you know, right. what, what else are there? Well, I mean, it's different coverage types. So Wink Martindale, uh, I, I think um, trying to remember here, the giants ran like 29%, like 30% cover one last year under Wink Martindale, the Titans ran 17%. You know, so like the coverages are going to be a lot different. The Titans run more co- uh, more quarters coverage, cover four, more cover two than Wink Martindale is going to run. But one thing that I would say is pretty similar is Shane Bowen will want to crowd the line of scrimmage. Now where Wink Martindale is going to bring five, six guys every time and force you to get the ball out and force the offense to make decisions, you can count on that. Shane Bowen may crowd the line of scrimmage, and we saw more of this with the Titans in 2023, which could be Shane Bowen influence. It's hard to tell without being in the building, you know, what's Shane Bowen's ideas, what's Vrabel's ideas, but Shane Bowen showed more of a tendency to crowd the line of scrimmage, double mug those A gaps over the center with two linebackers. But then, you know, you have six guys on the line of scrimmage, two guys drop out, an edge rusher drops out on the left, and the slot cornerback's coming from the right. So those simulated pressures, which... Honestly, if you look back at 2021, Mike Vrabel's and Shane Bowen's simulated pressure packages were like all the rage in the NFL. All the other teams were studying them because Shane Bowen will show a bunch of people at the line of scrimmage, but he's sending four. Do you know which four it's going to be? You probably don't, and he'll do it in exotic ways. I even saw one time the Titans had six guys on the line of scrimmage. They were showing their slot corner as a potential blitzer. And then they only bring four. They drop out the edge. The slot doesn't come. The linebackers drop it. But a safety comes up the middle, and it's Kevin Byard getting a sack. You know what I mean? So I think where he'll show that pressure 
like Wink Martindale would to confuse the offensive responsibilities up front. He'll not bring as many people, but still bring people from exotic locations, which can almost accomplish the same thing as what Wink Martindale is trying to do, but do it without sacrificing the bodies on the back end. How is he at improvising, especially when injuries strike? Because we all know the Giants historically, at least the recent years, have been one of the most injured teams. And all it takes is to lose like a Dexter Lawrence for a game or a Bobby O'Carrigay or something like that. Mm -hmm. Now you've got to change up what you do. So how is Shane Bowen as, a, as an improviser? Well, I would point out that in 2021, the Titans used the most players in NFL history on the roster, 91. In 2022, the Titans had the most players hit injured reserve in the NFL with 34. So if there is any person who is used to dealing with injuries and adjusting to them and getting the most out of players who maybe you wouldn't expect it from, it's Shane Bowen because he's had to do that on the defensive side of the ball so, so often over the last few years. So I think not only adjusting to the personnel that's available to him, but also having the ability to adjust what he does on defense to who's available and what works best for them. I think that's something that Shane Bowen has the ability to do. And I would say that the Titans did a good job in second halves on defense. Like, the, the Titans were able to stay in games, and a lot of people know, you know, the Titans are always prepared. Mike Vrabel always keeps his team in it. Well, a lot of that had to do with the Titans' offense can't score and can't get anything done, so the defense is already in a disadvantaged situation because the offense isn't helping at all. Back-to-back -back years of only 17 points per game, that makes it tough on a defense, as, you know, Giants country has seen when the offense is not helping out and that symbiotic relationship is off, it becomes parasitic, you know, and that's harder for the defense to survive that. But Bowen, despite all that, again, number one red zone defense, top rushing defense over multiple years. So regardless of the injuries and the personnel upheaval that you might see, and regardless of how bad the offense may be doing, Shane Bowen has shown that he has the ability to adjust to personnel, adjust to teams in real time, in games, and give the best defensive product that you possibly can. The Titans gave up 21 points per game last year, which in the NFL, you should score more than that personally, and with how bad the offense has been to have a defense perform that way, I think it's still very solid work from Shane Bowen. So again, I think he's a very, I wouldn't say very, but I think he's a good defensive coordinator who deserves one of the 32 jobs, even if maybe he's not one of those top tier elite, you know, innovative defensive coordinators that everybody thinks of. Hey, Giant fans. So I have a confession to make. There are some days that I just get so incredibly busy that I just don't have time to cook or run out to a local eatery for takeout. Thanks to DoorDash, I don't have to. DoorDash brings me everything I want, whether it's from a local eatery or a national chain store. I've even used DoorDash to get incidentals delivered from pharmacies and local convenience stores. And when I'm really in a pinch, even groceries. DoorDash is fast, easy, and convenient. Just download their app, find the establishment from which you want to order, and select from the menu options. You'll get what you ordered, or they'll make it right. And right now, new customers can get 50% off, up to a $10 value on their first order of $15 or more when you download the app and enter the promo code LOCKED23. Give DoorDash a try today and see just how easy it is to get what you want when you want it. That promo code, again, for 50% off, up to $10 on any order of $15 or more, is LOCKED23. Offer subject to change, terms apply. Hey, Giant fans, passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay's guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. 
So what does he need to show to be in that next level, do you think? Well, I think, number one, it would help to have an offense that helps you. It would help to have your personnel not constantly be hurt. I mean, a lot of things in the NFL are situational, which is why it's, so you know, the Washington Redskins or Washington Commanders uh, coaching staff that had, you know, Matt LaFleur and Sean McVay and all these great coaches on it that we look, they went three and 13. So it sometimes it's hard to look at coaches, coordinators, position coaches, and kind of separate them from their team's production. You know, there are good coaches who are on bad teams. That's just the reality. That's the way it works. So it's difficult, but I, I think that, I guess, r- repeat the question for me one time, just so I make sure that I answer yeah, it properly. I, I, you know I'm, what I mean? I'm saying, what does he need to do? You keep saying he's good, but he's not in that top. Right. Okay. Yeah, what does he need to do to get there? Right. So I, uh, that's where I'm going with this is I don't know – how much of this is Mike Vrabel's influence and how much isn't. But I will say one thing that was very frustrating for Titans fans and for me personally is where he allowed his cornerbacks to be on critical down. So it's third and three, and there are Titans cornerbacks eight yards off the ball. Quick slant, quick completion. And Shane Bowen has said in his interviews previously that he likes to allow his cornerbacks to have some autonomy there. He likes to allow them to kind of feel how things are going and decide. You can't do that, in my opinion, because far too often, a guy like Adoree Jackson, who Giants fans know before he went to New York, who turned into Christian Fulton for the Titans, who had very similar situation as Adoree Jackson. I think when you allow the cornerbacks and you allow the players to decide that, it's good because you're empowering them, you're giving them trust. But when your cornerbacks are consistently eight yards off the ball in third and short situations and allowing these easy completions to keep drives going... It's just endlessly frustrating. And at some point, the coach has to coach. And the coach has to tell the player, hey, man, you're hanging too far off. So where they want to do these twists and stunts up front, they want to show these pressures and back off and all that. If you make it easy on the offense by giving them these short completions and third and short situations, it's just going to be impossible. So I know you take risk when you play press and you get up quick and you try to play jam technique. I know that there are risks involved with that. But the opposite, and that's where I'll do this into a larger point from that's like a a technique and a scheme thing. Bowen wants to be Ben, don't break. If you go from the 20 to the 20 with no, you know, resistance, fine. When we get you in the red zone, we'll beat you. And that's great. But if you have an offense that isn't putting up a ton of points, you're just consistently giving other teams opportunities to get points on the board, whether it be three. And you know you know about the baseball game. The more swings you get, the more chance you get hits. So if you're allowing teams to go from 20 to 20 nonstop and just saying, hey, we bend, but we're not going to break. Well, eventually, over time, if the offense isn't helping enough, you will break too often. So the bend don't break philosophy, overall philosophy of Shane Bowen is what is frustrating to me. And I think that manifests itself in a small thing, a microcosm of that is not making sure that your cornerbacks are tight up on wide receivers in short yardage situations. So I think it's just a, hey, you know, we may give up the third and three on the five yard slant because our cornerbacks eight yards back. But we're not giving up the 20-yard pass, the big explosive play that allows the team to get a big chunk of yards quick. He's going to make teams kill him with a death by a 1,000 paper cuts, you know? Like, you're going to have to take what's there. But when you do that, you just give teams too many opportunities. So while I said he's a good coach, not a great coach, I think finding the balance between bend, don't break, and you can't bend this much, I think that is a balance that he's had a tough time finding. And whether that's him as a coach, or whether that's the personnel shortcomings with the injuries, whether that's Mike Vrabel saying, hey, don't give up the X play, don't give up the X play. I guess we're going to find out. You know, for the for the people that are listening that are panicking a little bit when you say he's a good but not great coach, I mean, what would you say to them to, to assuage their fears? Well, I would say that Um, I prefer Shane Bowen to Wink Martindale because like I said earlier, I like a coach who can vary himself. I like a coach who can adjust to not only his personnel to what the other team is doing rather than a system and a scheme where it's just, hey, you know what we're doing? Good luck stopping it. I Just my football philosophy is I want to be more varied. I want to be more multiple. Um, So I would say that uh, I think it's an improvement in in my opinion, even if you're not going all the way up. And at the end of the day, 
Football is a complimentary game. So the Giants need better from the, they need more of the offensive output from 2022 than 2023. And I think that Shane Bowen allows you to be good enough on defense. I, I have a thing, Patricia, you've seen us all amongst each other discussing in the, in the NFL chat for locked on and stuff. And I'm a big guy of you need an offensive coach because in today's NFL to get into the dance, to get a ticket to the dance, you got to have a great offense. That is just the way that it is now. Now, once you get in, which team has the best defense amongst the great offenses, that's probably the team that will go win the Super Bowl. So I think that Shane Bowen gives you a good enough defense that if your offense gets you into the dance, it won't necessarily be your defense that gets you beat. Shane Bowen is good enough in that realm where if you give him a good enough offense, it's going to make him a you know top 15 top 12 defensive coordinator. So you need your guys to be healthy. You need your best players out there. But I think if you have that and the offense improves to where it needs to be under Brian Dable, then the defense won't be the reason that the Giants fail. And that, while it's maybe not the most inspiring thing to say, I think that should be something that give Giants fans hope going forward and allow them to be optimistic. Giants have a lot of work to do. They've got to add some pieces to that defense. Uh, figure out how they're going to deploy the new pieces. It sounds like, you know, you mentioned safety. It sounds like that's going to be something they're going to want to take a look at, especially if they lose Xavier McKinney, which oh, uh, yeah, we'll see if that happens. Of course, they're also going to need a CB2 because I don't think they're going to retain a Dory Jackson. But Tyler, is there anything else that you can tell us about Shane Bowen that we should know? Um, all I would say is if you go to my Twitter account at Tic Tac Titans on X or whatever, Twitter, it'll always be Twitter to me. They're always the San Diego chargers to me. Uh, but if you go there and you just search in my profile, Bowen, Shane Bowen, I do a lot of film clips throughout the week and there may be some cool things that you might see for the giants plays that they're running schemes that they're running. Um, and the bad stuff too, it's frustrating and it'll just make you, you know, maybe more knowledgeable about the guy that you're getting as your defensive coordinator. All right. Well, we'll definitely check that stuff out. Tyler, appreciate you coming on, especially in such short notice. That's why this network is so awesome. We all help each other out. We're all like siblings, right? One big happy (laughs) family. And we can't even say a dysfunctional family because we get along so beautifully. He is Tyler Rowland, Tic Tac Titans on X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm Patricia Training, your host of the Locked On Giants podcast. Thank you, Giant fans, for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day. Or if you watch on YouTube, your first watch of the day, be sure to check out Locked On Titans. Tyler's doing a great job over there. And be sure to keep it here all week long. Locked On Giants, we're continuing our review of the top college quarterback prospects with our Locked On College hosts. For Tyler Rowland, I'm Patricia Trainer. I will see you tomorrow, Giant fans.